Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Amplifier number two is built and working. As you can probably hear, it's putting out quite a bit of sound and making the speaker move quite a bit. So I'll just stop that now. So this is the second amplifier circuit and I can tell you I had a hell of a lot of problems with this thing. First obstacle I ran into is I found out there wasn't enough space on the original board with the other amplifier on it so I had to build it onto this separate board here. But that's kind of a good thing because now that means there's extra room for the output resistors. Originally they were sticking out the front there not looking very good so that means I can now put them onto the board like that. I was going to use these white ones originally because they would have fit perfectly and look kind of cool but unfortunately I only have two of these and I need four. That's two for each amplifier. So I had to settle for these smaller ones. These are wire wound resistors about half an ohm each. I'm not sure if they'll be able to handle the full power of the amplifier but if they burn out I'll just have to replace them. I've been putting this thing through its paces and these haven't even got warm so yeah, I think we'll be all right. This is the other first amplifier. As you can see, I put a bit different heatsink on it now, which is way too small because that does get pretty hot. So what I'll do is I'll modify this one and put them both on somehow, you know, put them on so they're looking like that. Second obstacle to overcome was getting a green LED. Now the schematic specifies that you have to use a green LED. You can't use a red one or an orange one or whatever because they don't have the right voltage drop and I didn't have any green LEDs laying around so what I did was found a donor as you can see on the key um, on the bed this on keyboard that I don't use anymore ripped some LEDs out of that and put one in there so when I got this all built I hooked it up to my homemade power supply as you can see there gradually brought the voltage up and it didn't work so I had to go through this thing, try to figure out what was wrong with it. And I found out that there was a couple of things that I hadn't soldered in. So after I fixed that, I connected it all up again. Still nothing. The LED wasn't glowing and I wasn't getting any current showing on the meter. Normally with something electronic, if it's not working and barely taking any current from the power supply, you'd think, bad connection somewhere. Well that wasn't the case with this one. Because I didn't find any bad connections, but what I did find was a short circuit. Yep, a short circuit was actually causing this to take less current than it should. But I fixed that little short circuit and powered it back on again, and to my absolute astonishment, it worked. A short circuit was causing it to take less current than it should. Uh, that sounds absolutely crazy, but that's what was wrong with it. Anyway, as you know, that works now. I can play the tape and... As you can see, that um, goes pretty good. I haven't set the quiescent current yet, it's only at 5 milliamps, and the spe schematic specifies that you should have it about between 50 and 100, like I probably mentioned before. But um, it seems to drive this speaker pretty good. Although I can't actually turn it up any further, or this speaker will shake itself to pieces because it's very bad condition. The magnet is just coming away from the thing, I don't know if you can see that. So if I turn it up anymore, it's going to rattle. And the reason I put it on this uh, thing, that's just so the vibrations don't bother mum downstairs, you know, with all the bass. Because that does put out a good amount of bass. Anyway, the next thing to do, I'll hot glue all these wires in so they don't break. I'll probably mount the other amplifier on the same piece of metal. And, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. This is the third attempt at recording this. First time I wasn't very happy with it. Second time the microphone decided to kill itself. So hopefully this third time of recording this, what I'm about to say right now, should go through without any problems. Anyway, as you can see, I've put both the amplifiers on the piece of metal now. 
and I've made sure the transistors are well insulated from it so I've put a bit of sticky tape between the transistors and the metal as you can see so they're insulated from it but still close enough for the heat to get through that's sort of lukewarm so it's not like oh my god oh my god it's so hot I've got to turn it off right now it's burning up I've had it on for a good couple of hours now and it hasn't got any warmer than that so quite happy with that like before I'm powering off this transformer here in fact that gets way hotter than this has gotten but as you can see it's simple power supply just got the transformer and the diodes and the capacitors and I'm really surprised how well this works on an unregulated unstabilized power supply if I put my ear right up close to the speakers no ripple hum at all I just how it sounds so clean on a non-stabilized power supply I have no idea but I'm glad it does I'll give you a little demo of it now and right, now you can see the setup we've got the transformer and the diodes and the capacitors and the amplifier and my two bookshelf speakers let me give you a demo of how good this sounds in a minute you should be hearing highway blues when the tape starts goes um, let's just turn that up again short than block doing nothing short of blasting me out of the room there so I think that's a pretty successful amplifier I've got there now all I've got to do is just put it in a put it in a case and uh, make all the other things like the input selector and the volume controls and everything and we should have well I should have a nice little amplifier also, I think I'm going to cut this um, heat sink down a bit because I don't really need this bit at the top here, but yeah, I guess that's what I'll be getting on with in the next video. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, click on me right now to go to my channel. Or, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. And that's it, I'll see you next time, so until next time, goodbye.